Yes! Welcome. Sorry. I had to start with a celebratory spin, if you will. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you missed it, if you're living under a rock, but uh, my boy did it. My boy Fury did it. Anyways, sorry. I'm your host, E. Welcome to 1UP MMA's Weekly Recap, episode 4. So, I just want to just dive right in and say, I told you so. I love it. I love it. That was probably one of the best boxing fights I've ever seen. Just, it was, I mean, we, I was losing my mind. I was on my, just the tipsy, tippity, tippity toes of my toes. And, I mean, damn. Oh, such a good fight. Anyways, uh, sorry, I'm a little excitable here today. We're going to start with rapid fire updates for you. First update for you, Tino Ortiz first Alberto El Patron has been reversed to a decision. Uh, this is now pending further investigations. We don't really know if it's on Tito Ortiz, but it sounds like it's something's going on with Tito. Uh, some people are speculating doping, obviously, but we don't really have an answer for you yet. Also, Khabib has admitted that Tony Ferguson is tougher than any other opponent he's faced. And I kind of like it. I kind of like it because I kind of agree. Um, you know, McGregor should have been his toughest, but clearly wasn't. So that was a really, I mean, tip my hat to uh, Khabib uh, for, you know, putting that out there. But yeah, no, that's, that's going to make for an interesting fight. Edson Barboza has stated he wants to go down to 145 from 155, which is a nice 10-pound drop for him. I don't know if that's a good idea for someone so muscular and could just really suffer from the dehydration of it all, but I think it's a good idea to move maybe out of 155 considering you lost four out of your last five fights, and he's still not cut, by the way. Uh, his last two losses were to Paul Felder and Justin Gaethje. Uh, ironically, just to note though, he beat Hooker and lost to Felder, and that was our main event that just happened, so that's kind of just a little fun fact for you there. The UFC is looking to take the show on the road again internationally to Kazakhstan, which is pretty cool. Uh, they've never been there. I mean, they've been to Russia and China probably eight, nine times. Um, they've never been to really Central Asia. Shogun vs. Nogueira 3 is scheduled for UFC 250, and I'm, I kind of like it. I, I'm excited for it. I know everyone's going, oh, it's not really young bucks. They're they're kind of older guys, and they are. They, they fought each other in Pride and in UFC, uh, but and it's not even really a rubber match because Shogun beat Big Nog in both their last two uh, bouts. But the reason I really wanted to bring this up, because I thought it was kind of a cool fun fact, um, this will be the third decade that these two fight each other in. Their first fight was back in June 2005, and Shogun won. Their second fight was back in August 2015, which is exactly like 10 years after almost. And now we're in 2020, so this will be their third fight in their third decade going up against each other. I hope they fight again in the 2030s, even if they're, you know, in wheelchairs. I'd still pay to see it. Anyways, I think I got, uh, I'm going to give this one to Noguera, I think, and maybe he can get one out of the three. Kind of like Tito versus Chuck, maybe. Yeah, I said it. Aldo versus Henry Cejudo, also scheduled for UFC 250. I'm excited for this one. Uh, Henry Cejudo is going to put up the belt, the 135 pound belt. And if Aldo does win, it'll be his second belt in his second weight class, which is quite the feat for him. And it'll kind of like re-spark his career. You know, he's had a pretty slippery slope, pretty pretty bad run the last few fights. So this will be a nice. And then every honestly, I think he won the Marlin fight. Everyone's it's a pretty controversial loss. And now on to the recap. Just a quick one for last weekend. Oh boy, am I just ah oh, it was nice to see the hooker and felder fight go the way that i had predicted oh it's so nice especially when you get it on camera and you're like Ugh, now it's official so as y'all recall i said yeah it would go to decision and it did and just and one thing i, I remember mentioning was hooker's toughness uh, felder did get in some good shots man and and hooker just he ate him and he kept going 
And I think I think it was a fantastic fight. I do. It was it was one, probably one of the better fights of the year so far. And if y'all remember the sleeper pick that I picked and the sleeper fighter uh, for the sleeper fight and fighter, I picked um, I picked Jake Matthews versus Mr. Valhalla. Uh, it went exactly as I'd hoped, and Jake Matthews put on a damn show, and people are still talking about that fight. So, fantastic night of fights, but nothing, nothing. Nothing tops the fury of fury. That was fantastic. The man proved time and time again that footwork counteracts power. And in their first fight, when Wilder did land one bomb on fury, he proved that speed is the only, only answer to immaculate footwork. You got perfect footwork, doesn't matter how powerful your opponent is, they gotta be faster than you and they gotta anticipate where you're gonna be. When I heard that Wilder put on an extra 19 pounds and just just my obsession with, with Fury and his, and his amazing footwork um, and his ability to slip in and out and his just his experience overall as a fighter uh, gave us a beautiful seven round spectacle. It was it was amazing. And that but that that 19 pounds that he put on that Wilder added, I think he did it because he was convinced that that bomb that he did land on Fury should have knocked him out, but it didn't. And he didn't want him to get up again. And in every interview, he said, he ain't going to get up this time. I felt like that's just because you're putting on weight. Like, you think he's just not going to get up this time. You still have to land it. Fury didn't look like he was in trouble at all. There was a few good shots, mind you, but Fury's got a chain, which he proved. Um, but again, Fury over, or sorry, uh, footwork over power and i just want to say first of all um i want to thank i want to thank tyson fury so much because i put my beard on that fight literally so just to quickly touch on this coming weekend we've got ufc on espn plus 27 benavidez versus figurido did i say that right my personal pick for that i've got benavidez decision I don't, I don't see it becoming a knockout. I think Figueroa is really good on the ground. I don't think he's going to get submitted. But I think Benavidez might be a little too fast for him. And he'll probably score it on points uh, and striking. Uh, I'm not sure how much he's going to really wrestle with him. But I don't think should wrestle a Brazilian in general. That's just my rule of thumb. Anyways, so that's my pick for the main event. And as far as the co-main event is concerned, we got the women's featherweight bout. Uh, Felicia Spencer versus Zara Fan. I've got Spencer by decision for that fight. I'm pretty certain about it. I don't see it going to knock out. I don't see it finishing early either. I think it's going to be a decision. I think the whole night's going to have a lot of decisions in it, to be honest. Uh, and as far as my sleeper fighter and fight, uh, she's got it. She's getting a little more buzz now. Uh, but Megan Anderson, our Amazon woman, our our viking warrior princess if you will uh this one has so much potential uh we're pretty i've been watching her for a while keeping an eye on this one and a few others that i kind of see potential with and this one i mean she's great she's great she's long uh she's really focused on her craft she does her own little podcast thing as well she's so entrenched in the sport she has such a passion for it She's just she's just an all around great fighter. She's still developing. She's still learning, um, but I think she's she's kind of figuring it out. You know, she's kind of had a win loss win loss thing going for the last little bit. But she choked out Zara Far Farron, who's also fighting tonight. Um, and ironically, she lost to Felicia Spencer. So both the girls that are fighting tonight, she's won and lost to. But non nonetheless, I think. I think this fight is hers. I do. And I think the more she wins, the more momentum she builds and the more confidence she gets. So she's going to just keep tearing it up, I think. So that's my sleeper fighter and fight. Uh, look out for Megan Anderson. Keep an eye on her. Uh, she'll be taking on uh, Norma Dumont and she will be winning that fight. And I think I'm going to give it a uh, round two submission. She's just so long and Dumont is not. Uh, in fact, Dumont is about 5'7", and Anderson is 6 feet. Uh, I think her length is really going to come in handy, and I think she's going to be able to take her down to the ground 
and either ground and pound and submit her with some sort of choke or just take her down and submit her. Uh, but I think that's that's how that's going to go. So there you have it, folks. Uh, weekly recap, episode four for you. Looking forward to the fights this weekend. More excited for what's coming after that. We'll talk about that in the next episode. Thank you for watching. Our staff picks for this weekend and upcoming bouts. As always, go to oneupmma.com and check out our staff picks there. Hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, whatever your poison, your social media addiction, whatever that may be, hit us up because we're everywhere. All right. Thanks again for watching. I'm your host, E. Peace. And Aldo versus Henry Cejudo is also scheduled for two. Uh, you, the, 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 <laughs>